Hello, my name is LaShawn Rosen, and I was born on August 29, 2000. I was born in China and adopted on October 29, 2002, which was on my mom's birthday. It's a celebration where we come together as a family and spend some quality time. Piaget's theory has four stages of development. The first stage is up to the age of two years. He explains that in this stage, it's important to have different sensory experiences. For me, however, I didn't get that. Since I was in an orphanage, there were a lot of babies that the caregivers had to take care of. This means that they couldn't spend quality time on any of the children. I didn't receive the sensory experiences needed for that age. I also didn't talk until I was three years old, and I think being in the environment of the orphanage played a role into both of those things. Around the age of five, I attended two different preschools, both a half day each. I have been curious throughout my whole childhood, but specifically when I was young, I asked a lot of questions. It would be anything from objects to bigger ideas about the world. Because of the environment of being in an orphanage, it affected my language development. I had to do speech therapy for a while to get me to talk and to work on it once I did start. Kohlberg talks about moral development and how there are six different stages. The first stage explains that people make a decision based on if there is a punishment for that specific behavior. They think about what's considered good and bad. I think I was in this stage for a long time and it started at a fairly young age. I wanted to please everyone around me, so I wanted to make sure I didn't receive any consequences or punishments. As I got into elementary school, the different areas of development that I was struggling with have improved. I started hanging out with friends more outside of school. When my parents adopted me, they traveled with six other families who were adopting also. One of the girls that were adopted became my best friend and her name is Nora. My mom was a teacher and once a week, her and her friends would meet up for dinner. Nora and I would see each other for that and we also did Chinese dance, Chinese language, and ballet and tap on Saturdays. We became really close and we are still close to this day. Because my development was slow, I received special education services through second grade. Outside of school, I had physical and occupational therapy to work on gross and fine motor skills. In school, I worked with a reading specialist to practice reading out loud. In middle school, I continued to take classes in Chinese dance and language, as well as ballet and tap on the weekends. I also got involved in activities in school, which included musicals, choir, and band. These were the areas I started to make friends and found my interests. In addition, I started doing martial arts in eighth grade. It acted as a stress reliever, and I really enjoyed having a physical activity throughout the week. As we have learned from brain rules, it's important to have physical activity because it increases academic performance. It helped me with time management, and it also helped me have a time where I didn't have to think about schoolwork. Having this type of activity throughout the week gave me the motivation for my homework and allowed me to be more focused. During this time, I noticed that I struggled more with school. I didn't understand concepts as quickly as my classmates. This is where I learned that I'm more of a visual and hands-on learner. For a while, I would study by reading my notes, but I now know that it's not helpful for me. This relates to Bloom's model of the cognitive domain. It has different stages of how to learn material. Students have to master the first stage before going on to the next one in order for the learning to be effective. I went through those stages too fast, which could cause me to have trouble studying for the test since I didn't master the beginning stages first. In high school, it wasn't until my sophomore year to find my close group of friends. I joined marching band and a dance organization called Orcasus. These were the groups that I fell in love with and found my interests. I think being a hands-on and visual learner came out a lot in high school. 
especially for my English classes, there were a lot of assignments that were open-ended. Bruner's theory of presenting information in the right way relates to the assignments that my English teachers had. They realized that everyone had a different learning style. Instead of forcing us to do assignments and projects in a specific way, they allowed us to complete them in the way that we will understand the material best. Also relating to this, my English teacher specifically made sure the class was engaged and focused throughout the whole class period. Brain Rules talks about having to do something different every 10 minutes in order for us to continue being focused and engaged. My English teachers always had us doing group work and talking with our classmates, which helped with attention since we weren't just sitting there and listening to the teacher talk. There have been a lot of changes since I have come to college. I have gotten involved in a few activities, which are marching band, tau beta sigma, and pi beta phi. Joining marching band really helped my transition because I knew some people before classes started. Tau Beta Sigma is a band service fraternity and we do service projects across campus for the different music ensembles. I also am really glad I joined Pi Beta Phi. I've met so many people and met my closest friends through these organizations. College, especially the first year, is all about figuring things out on your own. This relates to Montessori's idea of children learning things without the direct help from a teacher. While my experience is not about specific classes, it still ties into everything regarding the first year of college. I am learning about independence without holding someone's hand. We are going to make mistakes, but there are people on campus if we need guidance. This is important since this is what I'm going to have to do for the rest of my life. An example of that is starting a new career. I am looking into being an occupational therapist for kids and adolescents. When starting that career, I'm going to have to figure many aspects of it on my own and learn from my mistakes.